Hello and welcome to the first episode of my Megabase tutorial and theory uh, series for Factorio. I'm Exterminator and I'm glad to have you joining me today. And in this first episode, we are going to uh, discuss what I consider to be the first step for starting a Megabase. Uh, now, just a quick little history. Uh, in the past, I attempted to do uh, actually two Megabase series, uh, tutorial instructional series uh, with two other uh, very experienced Factorio players, and uh, it just didn't really go as planned. It didn't turn out how we wanted. It didn't seem very helpful for people, and uh, it, it was just kind of convoluted and dis discombobulated. Um, this one I would like to approach uh, more chronologically and, and just methodically and, and you know, kind of just go through the steps chronologically as, as I would see them and as I've built my megabases before and participated in megabases before. Uh, so this first episode uh, is going to be a lot of discussion. I will be showing some examples. As you can see here, we are in one of my belt megabases I built quite a long time ago. And uh, we're going to start off with what I consider to be the first step is deciding on a goal. Uh, it starts with having a goal. You can build a megabase uh, technically without having in, any sort of goal, but I do think that it's going to make things easier for you most likely if you have some sort of goal or, or achievement in mind uh, to complete, uh, because that will actually give you something specific to work towards rather than just kind of haphazardly building towards nothing specific. Uh, thinking of and deciding on a goal is, is like the first step basically. Um, now, knowing what you want to achieve will help you start your journey uh, but how you actually achieve that is you know where the details and the challenges and the strategy come in and we will be discussing all those things in depth in future episodes uh, this will be definitely a multi-episode uh, series and uh, we're just going to kind of take things step by step so I'm going to give you some examples of things you could pick because I'm asked quite a lot and I see questions on the subreddit and forum and stuff quite a lot about uh, you know how do I start a megabase? And you know, I, I say, well, you know, you need, you know, we'll help to have some goals of some sort. Uh, and then people say, well, what should I do? Uh, so here's some examples. First off, I just want to mention that you can do whatever it is you want to do. These are just some examples. If any of these appeal to you, fantastic. If you want to mo modify them, great. If you want to do something totally different and you already have an idea in mind, you know, that's that's even better. Uh, Factorio is thankfully a game where you can basically play however you'd like and set whatever goals you'd like. Uh, now the base goal in Factorio is to just launch a rocket. That in and of itself is not really worthy of a mega base. Uh, however, you can expand upon that. And one very common, and I would say the easiest and most straightforward and simple uh, goal to set for yourself uh, for mega base is more than one rocket. Uh, more specifically, rockets per X amount of time. Uh, you know, a common one is a rocket per minute. Or, you know, if that just seems way too overwhelming to you, you could do a rocket every five minutes or a rocket every 10 minutes, which is still, you know, pretty substantial uh, compared to just launching one rocket, period. Uh, the reason that a rocket per minute is the most straightforward and easiest is because you only have to mass produce the rocket parts. Uh, in this point in the game, and meaning in our current version in 1.1, uh, you don't actually have to launch satellites um, for it to count. Uh, the satellites just give you space science. Uh, however, if you don't even want to mess with science on a megabase scale, you could purely just launch rockets and you don't even have to build satellites. And that way you only have to produce the rocket parts that actually go into making a rocket. Uh, as we can see, um, those, you know, if you take a look at that, and we'll hop into another save here where I actually have, you know, the rockets uh, going and all that stuff. Um, the, these uh, crafting menus are a little bit wonky because this is a very old safe uh, and, and a lot of research is not unlocked because it wasn't that way. Um, but if you look at the rock parts, then that's all you'll have to produce. And again, the satellite's optional. Another very common, extremely common, probably the most common uh, goal to set is some amount of science per X amount time period. Uh, again, science per minute is very common. It's, you know, it's just easier to understand, easier to calculate. However much science you do per minute is really up to you. Uh, it could be 500 science per minute. It could be 200 science per minute. It could be 100 science per minute. Um, I think generally, you know, everyone has their own, you know, kind of benchmarks and stuff. Uh, I myself 
consider like 500 to 1,000 science per minute to be kind of the threshold of actually entering the mega base stage. Uh, personally, I would say 1,000, uh, you know, again, I'm certainly not the authority on all of it. You know, I don't, I don't make the decisions for everyone by any means. Um, but I would say generally the, uh, you know, from what I've seen and read and, and stuff and heard people say, I, I think the 500 to 1,000 science per minute of all sciences is generally considered mega base level uh, at that stage. Uh, this base I'm in right here, again, is a base I built quite a long time ago. It's a belt base. And uh, this one produces one red belt of science per minute, which uh, came out to be, I think, like 1.3 or 1.4 thousand science a minute. Uh, and this is all belt based, as you can tell. We are very extensively using belts, uh, basically with a massive main bus system. Uh, you know, we have our smelting over here and stuff. I will go into all these details in future episodes. That's not really what this one's about, but just to kind of show you an idea of, of the map we're actually in, this was my starter base, um, if you will, to give you a sense of scale. And then the actual mega base is over here. Uh, so, science per minute. Again, it can be whatever amount you want. Um, it is, of course, more difficult than rockets, just due to needing more materials. Um, you know, it's, it's still fairly simple because you've already made science, you know, to get to, you know, to be able to actually build a mega base, you know, to get to a rocket and late game research and stuff. You will have already built science, so it's not like it's an entirely new concept. However, logistically, it will be far more difficult uh, to do this at scale, at a large scale, than rockets will. Again, because rockets only require the simple parts to make a rocket. Um, science, all science, you know, is going to require a vast array of materials. You know, red science, which, while simple, at larger scales, that's still quite a lot of materials. You know, and then green science, as, as we know, if you've built science, uh, which I hope you would have at this point, uh, just require increasingly more complicated and just more expensive materials. Uh, space science, of course, requires the rocket, and so on and so forth. So supplying these at a large scale, say a thousand science per minute, logistically is quite a bit more complicated than rockets, but just conceptually, it is still fairly straightforward because you've already done it. Um, some other examples, uh, I'm going to hop into another save here. Uh, I'm going to hop into my supplying Atlantis save, uh, which is a current save I'm doing. We can kind of look better at the rocket parts and all that stuff if we want to. I'm not going to bother with the mods because we won't need them for another save I hop into. Um, but this is one I'm doing, and in this map, we are actually doing uh, a certain amount of stacks of every single item. Uh, we are basically doing stacks of every item, and, and it's an increasing amount based on my Twitch subscribers. Uh, the details past that aren't really important. Uh, however, that is also a goal that, you know, can be mega base scale. You can do, you know, there's the 30 stack challenge it used to be, where you would just make, you know, 30 stacks of every single item. It would basically be like a chest full almost of every single item in the game. Uh, this base in particular, uh, I have to make about 250 stacks of every single item in the game. Uh, that, you know, that's everything. That includes nuclear reactors, all the components for that. That includes rocket silos, modules. Uh, you know, again, this is not 250 items. This is 250 stacks. So whatever they stack in, this can very quickly get out of hand as I'm experiencing and uh, be able to be built at a very large scale. Um, so this is just kind of an example. This base is not done. Uh, it's, it's getting there for sure. This is kind of what it's looking like. This is... Uh, a train and bot base, which is my preference uh, when building mega bases, but it, it, I'm not saying it's better, it's just my preference. Um, so we're not actually done with this base yet, but it's it's getting to the point where we can actually start producing the items. Uh, so that's an option, stacks of every item in the game. Another option is every item on the bus. So, you know, depending what scale you build to, it may or may not be considered mega base, but just due to the fact of having every single item on the bus, uh, meaning that you build a main bus with every single item or every single intermediate on it. Um, I have seen bases before. I think Zisto did one a long time ago where he literally put every item, like every single item on the bus that could actually be bussed. Um, and that can get quite large. Just, I mean, it almost has to due to the amount of things you have to belt and move around and produce. Um, so that's another option. There's many other things. You can just make up your own goals. Uh, you know, that's, especially after you've played a while, that's maybe what you have to do. 
this is all vanilla. It, you know, you can of course get into mods and that just adds a whole new plethora of goals and, and challenges. That's not really, I'm not really going to cover that in this series because this is strictly meant for vanilla mega basing. Um, so those are just some examples for you to get, get you know, your, your, your mind going, you know, and, and brainstorming and, and coming up, you know, with things you'd like to do. If you have great suggestions, like any other suggestions, you know, for vanilla mega bases that I didn't mention, definitely leave them in the comments so people reading that can, you know, check that out. Uh, another thing to consider, and I'm going to hop into uh, the last save I want to look at here. Uh, another thing to consider is the what logistic method do you want to use in your base? Uh, this being bots or belts or trains or a mixture of them. Uh, you know, personally, like I said, I prefer bots, like a bot train thing where I actually have bots in my builds, actually moving the materials within the production areas, and then trains moving the materials between production areas. And this base is a very good example of this. This is a this is the biggest base I've ever built. This is a 4,000 science per minute base. This was this is an old base. So, you know, just keep in mind, a lot of these techniques and stuff are kind of out of date. Um, I'm not actually sure how well this map is going to work because, um, well, I've put 426 hours into this game, if that into this save, if that gives you <laughs> any idea. Um, but uh, I'm not sure how well this is going to work because I use some, like, the recipes for science and all that have completely changed. The production builds for science and all that are, are just not going to work. Um, but this is kind of what the base looks like. This is a, so this is our power. Solar fields here. Uh, you know, this is all the production areas. Plastic for red circuits. All the smelters. This is a very convoluted smelting system that um, really just, would not be needed at all at this point in, in game to you know where the game's at development wise and in stuff um you can see how fast our bots are moving we are not at a faster game speed we are at game speed one but we have a very very high bot speed again the research is totally messed up uh because you know it, because research has been changed so much um but we were at bot speed 19 basically uh on this map which gave us over a thousand percent bot moving um, mining productivity got completely reset. We were at a very high mining productivity. Uh, but as you can see, we have the bots within the build, and then we have the trains moving the materials between builds. Uh, just to kind of take a look here, very extensive rail system here. Uh, as you can see, these are all beaconed and modeled, which again, we'll get into that in detail in future episodes, uh, but just to give you a general overview of what we're looking at. So this is what I would consider a bot base, bot train base. Uh, a belt base is like the the, the uh, belt mega base I did, I showed you in the beginning of the episode. A train base only, I've not personally done one of those, but that can add a whole new set of challenges, um, but also a lot of fun is just using trains, where you're just like transferring, like using trains basically as, as chests and having your builds pull from and insert directly into the trains without bots or belts that is a lot more challenging i would say uh but if that sounds like something you're interested in definitely can do that or you can do a mixture of them i've seen quite a few mega bases uh you know my base tours where people mix the strategies where they will have belts and bots both moving things around and then trains between the builds uh any of that is viable the game is in a stage now the, the game as a whole factorio is in a stage now where any of it is viable. And, and that's fantastic. There was a time where performance-wise, game performance-wise, um, belts were just not as good as belts for game performance. Like they were just nowhere near as optimized. They were just not, they would lag you out. They were not nearly as good in that sense. And for that reason, a lot of people uh, went to bots. That was a long time ago. That's no longer the case. Belts are very, very well optimized. In some cases, if you use them correctly, belts are actually can be more performance efficient than bots. Now, you do have to be very particular with how you use them, uh, but they can be. Uh, but any of these options are, are open to you. And I'm not going to tell you which one to use because that's your choice. And I don't want to tell people how it's like specifically you need to play the game this way. Um, I'm going to share with you, you know, my experience. Again, I prefer bots. Uh, I just get kind of frustrated working with belts, but I know a lot of people love belts, and that's that's fine. That's great. If that's what you want to do, like, definitely go for it. It's a different set of challenges than bots. Um, I think bots have 
uh, different challenges than belts and, and stuff like that. Um, I will go a bit more into detail for each of these specifically in future episodes and maybe give you a better idea uh, of, you know, which one you may want to choose. Uh, but by already playing the game and have, you know, gotten to the end game, I would assume, to start building a mega base, you probably have a good feel for what you like and don't like, you know. You will have obviously used belts because you have to uh, for a large portion of the game until you unlock bots. And if you've used bots, then you'll kind of know how you feel about those. And if you haven't, maybe give them a try. Uh, maybe integrate some bots into your current base before deciding uh, and see how you like playing with them. Uh, and, and you can decide. And if you've used trains, then that maybe will give you an idea there. Uh, you know, So you can do any of those methods, mix, match, however you'd like. Um, so there is... There's a logistical side of things that you need to think about. Last thing I'd like to show you is in regards to Factorio uh, calculators. Now, I will go much more in-depth and kind of give instructions and tutorials for how to use these in a future episode, but I think it's actually worth your time to just hop into a calculator, uh, you know, of some sort, and play around with it, throw some numbers in there, see what it spits out to kind of give yourself an idea of scale. And we'll go take a look at that now so I can just give you some examples of, you know, maybe what to look at. Alrighty, so we are in a Factorio calculator. Uh, this is actually in a browser. If we go out of full screen here, this is the Factorio Lab. And I'll put the link for this stuff down below. Uh, this is just a browser calculator. There are in-game versions, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, and it's worth maybe your time to just enter, you know, whatever you decide to go with or just play around. So let's just, let's say science, for example. Let's just say we want to start playing around with some science. Uh, this is a units per minute. So I just clicked on the add product, per, units per minute, per hour, per second. I like per minute because it just makes the most sense to me. Um, and we'll just go ahead and add every science here. And again, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail with this. Um, it's actually wrong. Uh, a ton of detail with this because that will be for a future episode where I actually show you how to use these specifically. Um, but let's just say you want to do 500 science per minute of every type. It, it can be kind of hard to just imagine how much materials this is going to take. You know, to just imagine, you know, how, mu how much iron and copper is this going to take per minute? How, how much circuits and steel is this going to take per minute? You can't, it's hard to just imagine that and just come up with a number. So just playing around with these calculators can be nice to give you an idea of scale and you know kind of show you <laughs> what this is going to require so you can break these things down if you'd like uh but you know it's going to kind of tell you how much belt it's going to take stuff like that um but if we scroll down so this is showing you the science pack stuff um you know if we really want to get into the meat of it so if we want to do 500 of every science per minute you're going to need roughly 27 and a half thousand iron Per minute every single minute you're going to need to be producing this amount or more preferably a bit more you know you're going to need 14 and a half thousand copper you're going to need uh, 7600 almost 7700 green circuits per minute you're going to need 2000 red circuits per minute and you can just look through this you know 4000 steel per minute latency structures uh you know of course because we need them for yellow science and if you add in even space science if you wanted to achieve that um, so this is infinite research. I'm not, okay, so space science, it's thrown over here. Um, let's just throw that in as well. That's definitely going to increase the cost. So you can just type it in there. You know, this has gone up to 37 and a half thousand, uh, 29, almost 30,000, 16 and a half thousand, et cetera. So just go into these, type in some numbers for what you want to do. If you just want to do rockets, you want to do, you know, science. If you decide to do stacks of every item, uh, you can maybe just just kind of spitball an amount. You Maybe you, you want to do 100 stacks of every item. Just be like, okay, well, I want to make a stack of every item per minute. So it takes 100 minutes once everything's going, which that would be insane. Like, that's a ton of production. But you could enter, if you wanted, every single item and do one per minute and then see how much it would take. And you can just play around with this. Uh, there are in-game options as well. If you don't want to do something outside the game, uh, you can use something like Factorio Planner or Factory Planner, which I've actually spotlighted. Uh, I will put a link to that spotlight and the mod down below in the description. But this is an in-game mod you can install that will do a similar thing. Um, I would say it is a bit more uh, complicated to, you know, kind of figure out 
in in work with uh, than than this one in my opinion uh, it, it works great it's just a little harder to kind of learn and get used to uh, but it works fantastic so this is an in-game version uh, another one is Helmod. i personally not spotlighted or use Helmod much um i don't really like it myself there's a lot of folks who like it obviously it's not a bad mod uh i just i personally find it I just don't really understand it. I, you know, I probably haven't given it a fair chance, but I found it very hard to work with and understand. Uh, but this is another option. There are a few other options, but these are the main ones, you know, that I'm aware of and that are quite popular. Uh, you could, you know, if you want to go old fashioned, you could, of course, just get out pencil and paper and a calculator, but <laughs> that's totally an option. Um, you know, so there you go. There's that. I think this is a pretty good place to close out this first episode. Uh, oh, you know, one last thing I do want to mention, I am giving you these hard numbers here, like 500 science per minute, and, you know, saying, well, if you do that, you're going to need this amount of iron per minute. Uh, so this is, this would be like correctly ratioed, uh, meaning that, you know, you are producing the correct amount of iron for all of these things, and you are producing the correct amount of circuits for all these things, and it's going to take this many assemblers that are producing this rate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this is not required. If you just want to build, you know, if you just want to build however you want to build, if you're just like, well, I'll set up my science production for 500 science per minute, but then I'll just, you know, kind of take a shot in the dark and just build some odd amount of green circuit machines, some odd amount of iron production. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to say you shouldn't do that. Uh, personally, I find it much easier to work with in ratios because it's going to give you a much more expected solid result. Uh, if you set up science production and then labs to consume 500 science per minute and you just build, I don't know, 20 green circuit machines that are max beacon moduled and, you know, 40 uh furnaces making iron that are max beacon moduled i mean you know obviously going to be making nowhere near enough iron because you've way overproduced circuits and way underproduced iron and not everything is going to work it like correctly you will produce some science uh but it won't be like the same amount of everything and it certainly won't work consistently per minute um but hey if you want to do that like some people are just like screw ratios i don't want to do that i'm just gonna I'm just going to eyeball, you know, and that's kind of what I'm doing actually with my stack of every item per minute or not per minute stack of every item in the game. Um, that one, I think, is a bit more reasonable to do that with because I don't have a set amount of like I am doing this amount of stacks per minute. It's just a general end goal. Um, but if you're doing something per minute, I do think it's going to make your life a lot easier to work in ratios and build the amounts you need to build. But if you don't want to do that, that's okay. These tutorials will still be relevant and hopefully help you. Um, just keep in mind that it's not really going to work in the expected way as what I may be showing. Because I'm going to be showing things based on the ratio and expecting that we will be producing the correct amount of materials for these to actually work at this rate consistently. Um, but there you go, guys. That is episode one. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, you know. I tried to keep it short and to the point. There was a fair bit to cover. I just want to, you know, kind of get get your brains doing and, and, and thinking about because I think the first step is coming up with a goal and a lot of people struggle with that. That is a question I get a lot is like, how do I start a mega base? And I don't know what my goal should be. I don't know what to do. Well, this is the first step. You know, I'm not going to hop into builds and like little tiny minute details of like what train size you should use and what beacon layout you should use. When we have, you know, it would be silly to jump into that before we've even figured out what our goal is. So give it some thought. Leave your thoughts down below. You know, again, if you have any ideas for goals I didn't mention uh, and stuff like that, definitely leave them below. I would love your feedback too. Uh, you know, if you enjoyed this, a like is much appreciated because it helps other people find the video as well. If you're new to the channel uh, and aren't subscribed, feel free to subscribe to keep up with all the content. Turn on notifications so you can be notified when more episodes of this series and other series come out. And uh, if you have suggestions for next episodes, uh, you know, Things you would like to see me cover and discuss, if you would, you know, things you think I should do differently and how I do my episodes, definitely let me know. And until next time, guys, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.